I love solo camping. To me, it is one of the best ways to rest, relax, recover and recuperate in the beauty of nature. Of course, solo camping does come with certain risk, the magnitude of which varies and depends on multiple factors. But as long as we know how to minimize those risks, we will be able to enjoy a solo camp. My name is June and in this video, I'm going to try to answer one of the questions I get asked the most, which is how to be safe as a female solo camper. First and foremost is to do enough research before the trip. Now this includes researching on the location you're going to. Uh, for starters, you could study the Google map of the specific location you're going to and just get to know a little bit about the geographical characteristics of the location. And also you could Google and find out the experiences of other people who have been to that location. That way you get to gain insight and you will know better what to expect from that location. And of course, research also includes checking the weather forecast before the trip. In Malaysia, generally, we look out for heavy rains or thunderstorms and this is to ensure that you are well prepared and you bring the right gear for the right weather. If it's been raining all week, you generally want to avoid campsites which are near any big body of water, especially riversides, and also places which are flood prone or even hill slopes. And if luck is not on your side and the weather is extreme and horrible, just cancel the trip because, you know, the campsite is not going anywhere. Your safety is number one. The next most important way to be safe when solo camping is preparation. Now, this includes preparation of camping gears because you want to make sure you prepare the right gears for the right location, for the right weather, for the right circumstance. And secondly, preparation of your vehicle. So before your trip, make sure your vehicle is in a good condition. You know, check your engine oil, check your tires because come on, your vehicle is going to decide if you arrive at the campsite safe. And of course, preparation of your health. Now this includes physical health and mental health. Why? It's because in the event of you getting stuck in any sticky situation, having a good state of mind and physique will ensure that you have a better likelihood of getting out of this sticky situation. Next up, have a safety net. Inform your loved ones where exactly you're going to and when exactly you're expected to be out of that area. Give them a contact number. This can be the campsite operator or the ranger's office. And this is uh, in case you are not reachable after that safe time frame. If you're going to a campsite, give the campsite operator an emergency contact number. And if you're going into the wild, make sure to inform the local ranger or drop a word at the ranger's office. You have arrived at the campsite. What should you do? Now, if you're camping in a wild or a semi-wild area, do scope out the area first to make sure you are not in the wildlife zone or the wildlife walking path. If you're able to recognize or identify animal footprints or recognize animal feces, that would be good. And it would be really useful if you could check out and just see if there's any camper around or if there is any little house in the vicinity of the campsite so that in the event that you need help, you know where to get help. And if you're camping in a paid, gated, guarded campsite like this one, generally you don't have to worry that much. You can always talk to the campsite owner, the campsite operator and get as much information as you want as to what to look out for, what are the potential hazards, and then you can camp worry-free. Next up is where to choose to pitch your tent. Now, 
generally you want to look for a flat ground to pitch your tent for obvious reasons. If you're camping at a riverside, the general rule is not to pitch your tent too close to the water. Try to pitch your tent slightly further away from the water and if possible on a slightly higher ground because if it rains, you might get washed away. If you're camping on a hilltop, avoid soft grounds, avoid slopes. If you're camping by a tree or beside a tree, make sure to look up and check that the tree is not dead or there is no dead branches because in strong winds or in heavy rain, one or more of the branches might fall on you and hurt you or damage your tent. And if lightning strikes, it can be life-threatening. Also, try to avoid camping near bushes. For example, really thick, tall wild grass or you know, really thick bamboo grove because these are the places where creepy crawlies like to hang out. Now let's face it, no matter how well prepared you are, sometimes danger does come unannounced and unexpected. So it is good to have a few tools with you when camping. For example, you can have pepper spray, which is easily reachable in your pocket, in your bag. A whistle is also an important thing to have. Never forget your whistle. And of course, it is good to keep some sharps with you. For example, I've got this small little blade, which is easily reachable. I've got my Moragnith. I've got a simple machete. Of course, when it comes to shops, make sure you're comfortable and confident in using them because you don't want them to end up hurting yourself. You can also get these things online, you know, those little keychain with this detachable strap that once detached, it lets out a really loud siren. You can have one of that. There's also this electronic mosquito repellent, which also has an ultrasonic wave function which is supposed to ward off certain uh, animals like rodents and even creepy crawlies like snakes. And you could also get a smartwatch with a built-in SOS emergency button in which, you know, if you're stuck in any situation, you need to be rescued. Just a touch of a button, it sends out a signal for rescue. Well, I don't have one yet because it's kind of expensive, but hopefully one day I'll get to own one. Bonus tip! Now, you're camping, you're in a beautiful location, you're living the life and I know you're so tempted to share your content instantly on social media. But I never do that. I almost never share my camping content in real time. Usually what you see on social media is something that has happened days or even weeks ago. And I highly suggest you do the same for safety. Sharing content instantly on social media, especially if your location is exposed, is basically an indirect invitation to certain people with not so good intentions. It is just not worth it. Remember June's tip, don't Instagram, but later grab. Now there are quite a few more ways to stay safe as a female solo camper. But of course, for obvious reasons, which is my own safety, I'm not going to disclose all in this video. Otherwise, it just defeats the purpose. Alright, so those are some of the tips and advice on how to stay safe as a female solo camper. Now, these are by no means set in stone. Different people have different ways of staying safe out there. but the basic fundamentals remain the same, which is have courage, practice common sense, and always trust your intuitions. I hope you find this video helpful. Just remember with the right preparation and the right mindset, you will be able to have a good time out there solo camping. And if you have any additional tips or advice on how to stay safe as a solo camper, please leave a comment because I would really love to hear from you. Alright, that's all for today's video. Stay safe out there. Bye-bye.